Ever since I bought my first 3D printer a few years ago, more and more of my time is being spent in CAD making 3D models. It's where I spend hours and hours designing, tinkering, adjusting, moving, restarting, and all these things with the goal of bringing my designs to life. And I also love finding ways of making things more efficient and more enjoyable. So when I came across this space mouse from 3D Connection, I was immediately interested. All the features seem so cool and it just looks like something that makes 3D modeling that much easier. And so, in my mission to become a better maker, I decided to have a go at making one myself. And luckily, the maker community is always a few steps ahead of me, so I was able to find some really helpful blog posts that I've relied on heavily when making this project. I'll leave links to these in the description below, be sure to check them out and support those creators. As with all my projects, my first step was to sit down and draw up a list of design constraints so that I don't end up spending unlimited amounts of time on this project. And the first thing is I wanted this mouse to be intuitive and easy to use. It should feel almost like you're controlling the model in your hand, but through the mouse. Secondly, I wanted it to be made from components that were easily accessible, so that if anybody ever wants to have a go at making one themselves, it won't be too difficult. And last, but certainly not least, it needed to look good, or at least decent. And with all that being said, it was time to dig out some components and get making. So the main component we're going to be using for this project is the BNO055 from Adafruit. It's a tiny sensor that's going to tell our mouse which way it's facing and kind of gives it a sense of balance and direction. For our microcontroller, we're going to be using an Arduino Pro Micro. It's got everything we need, it's small, it's easy to use, and most importantly, it gets read by your computer as a USB device, so it's a perfect fit for this project. And the last bit of hardware we're going to be using is this button that I bought from Amazon. More on this later. The next step then was to get everything put on a breadboard to see whether this idea would work like I had in mind. I 3D printed this little mount that's held together by compression and extension springs and it just gives the BNO somewhere to sit so while I'm testing it I'll know I'm getting accurate readings. With the breadboard ready to go, I got my pal ChatGPT to write some code for me. And I was really happy to see that everything was working as intended. Moving the sensor lets me rotate the model in Fusion, and when the button's pressed, I was able to move into pan and zoom mode, letting me do those things as needed. So, as far as I could tell, it was a case of so far, so good. The next step then was to go back into Fusion and make a case or an enclosure for this that both looked good and felt comfortable to use. This was the final design and I'll have links to all my 3D print files in the description below. And once the model was ready, it was time to get everything sliced and ready for printing. I set up the slicer to stop at two different points. The first point is so that I could put some square nuts into the knob, and then the second is so that I could put some ball bearings into the base so that the mouse has a little bit of extra weight. The parts came out looking fantastic, I was really happy with the quality, the surface finish and all in all the printers did an amazing job. However I wasn't 100% set on the colour, I kind of just chose a random filament to print in, so I decided to make everything look a little bit nicer. So the first step was to sand these prints down as much as possible to try and get the layer lines evened out. And to help me with this, I 3D printed this sanding block that you can get on printables and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. 
and after lots and lots of sanding when I was happy with the way the surface was looking I was ready to move on to the next step which is priming. And I applied two coats of primer to get a nice even surface finish and then we were ready to go ahead and use our spray paints. And I was really excited to do this. This was my first time using spray paints on 3D prints. So drop a comment down below guys. Let me know what you think of the overall result or if there's anything you think I could have done a little bit better. I also wanted the button that I was going to use to match the overall aesthetic a little bit better. So I covered the main button with some masking tape to protect it and then a little bit more spray painting. And then on to my favourite part, assembly. First up was getting the BNO mounted onto the spring assembly that really forms the heart of this project. Then it was a case of getting everything soldered up and using a little bit of hot glue just to keep the Arduino Pro Micro in position. And as I was finishing up putting this all together, I looked at it and I thought, you know what, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So it's time for the reveal. All in all, I'm happy with the way this project turned out. I managed to tick off all the design criteria that I set out at the beginning of the video. And really the main thing that I would like to improve on going forward is getting a better surface finish using the spray painting technique. So hopefully that's something that I can get better with over time. And you know, if you're gonna use a space mouse like this to help with your workflow, you might also need a macro pad to go with it. So be sure to check out this video where I make my very own macro pad. And that's a wrap for this one guys, don't forget to like, subscribe and leave some comments down below and I'll catch you all next time.